Hello, welcome to my channel. I want to show you some African wildlife in colored pencil. And I'm starting with a sketch. This time I'm going to be working on a slightly smaller piece of paper, about six times eight inches in size or so. I'm mostly going to be using Stadler colored pencils, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit more uh, later. I'm starting by indicating where some of the main elements will be. The horizon will be a little bit lower. The grass, the line of the, the grass here will be near the bottom of the paper around let's say one sixth of the height of the paper. I want the tree in the middle and maybe a couple of trees in the background and I'm going to put the giraffe here on the right side to the right of the tree like maybe the giraffe is um, eating some of the leaves or maybe just uh, looking for some shade I don't know I also plan to put some mountains in the distance just to create a little more depth in my drawing but the sky is going to be mostly plain blue without any clouds. So it's going to be a very simple but colorful scene with some nice interesting African wildlife. So I'm starting to work on the sky and I'm using the Stadler colored pencil. This is a light blue colored pencil. Now let me just explain my approach when shading larger areas because this is going to take a little bit of time. Colored pencils are quite a bit slower than pastel pencils, or soft pastels for that matter. Um, they don't blend that well, colored pencils. They are not that great at blending. Some people like to use solvents. I don't use solvents. I tend to prefer dry media. I work in dry media only. But what I like to do is I like to apply them kind of patiently and carefully in several layers and blend with q-tips. I find that q-tips are pretty good blending tools with these wax based colored pencils like the Stadler ones and one of the things that kind of helps me blend them a little bit is because uh, maybe they are not quite as dark as some other brands because I found that uh, some other brands they are a little bit more rich in terms of color but they're also a little bit more difficult to blend. These uh, Stadlers are a little bit lighter. Uh, they're easier to apply, easier to work with. They remind me of graphite pencils in a way and the pigment is also easier to move around with blending tools such as blending, top, uh, blending stumps, brushes and q-tips. And they're also a little bit easier to erase, but their disadvantage is definitely they are a little bit lighter than some other high quality brands. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm using these Q-tips and I'm gradually building that tone, making sure that my sky looks kind of smooth because I don't want it, I don't want it to have any texture. But you can see with a little bit of patience and with a lot of blending, you can actually achieve a fairly smooth tone and you can see that I'm uh, achieving a, a very nice looking blue sky in the background but it takes a bit of time. If I were doing this in pastels it would probably take no more than a few minutes but this whole process of shading and coloring this sky probably took about a half an hour or almost half an hour which is obviously kind of time consuming but since I chose to work with this uh, with this medium, that's what we're going to stick with. And it's not a big problem. As you can see, we're getting there and uh, the, the sky is starting to look nice. And that's just going to be the background. So I like to work with these Q-tips. They help me move around the pigment from the colored pencils without using any solvents. Some people may not like this technique, uh, they may prefer to use something else, but this is what works for me. So now I picked up a slightly darker blue, 
Yeah, this is, uh, I'm not really sure, but this may be something like a cobalt blue or something like that, but it's a little bit darker. And I went over the top part of the paper with it a little bit. I want the sky to be to, to be getting gradually lighter towards the horizon. So I want the upper edge to be a little bit darker. To finish it off, I used a brush to blend everything more even more evenly and so far so good. I think that's going to be uh, good enough for my background and uh, now I'm going to be moving on to drawing these trees and their canopies. I'm going to start working on I'm going to start working on the trees uh, with a brown pencil, a Stadler brown pencil and I'm first going to try to draw some indications of their general shape, like uh, where some of the bigger boughs and branches are. And these are African type trees, so I'm going to try to imitate their shape and texture, as well as the shape of their canopies. I have a few reference photos in front of me, and I just pick the shapes that I that I like best. And I'm going to be putting two trees here because um, when you're drawing landscapes or a combination of landscape and wildlife, it's always a good idea to try to achieve some depth in your drawing so that the viewer can feel like some of these objects are in front of the others. And uh, that's why it's a good idea to have maybe a tree in front of the other trees or a few trees in the background and so on. You can see that I drew a few branches here which are kind of discontinued from the rest of the from the rest of the branches. That's because I'm going to be drawing some of the leaves in between and I want to I want to make it look like the canopy is obscuring some of the branches like uh, some of the branches are hidden inside the canopy or behind the canopy. Now these African trees usually don't have very um, thick foliage, very dense canopies, but at the top if they haven't been grazed maybe they do, so I'm gonna draw a little bit more of those leaves here on this one and I'm using an olive green the reason why I'm using an olive green is because I want uh, I want a yellowish component in that green. I don't want it to look too fresh, maybe a little bit drier, and maybe I'm going to be adding some other warmer tones to it, like maybe a little bit of yellow. But the main color that I'm going to be combining the green with is going to be black and I'm going to explain why I use these two in combination and I've already done this in some of my previous tutorials on drawing trees. So I'm going to start working with this black and I'm going to start going over the green areas. And as you can see I drew the green areas so that they kind of resemble the canopy of those African trees. And now I'm just uh, going over that with a little bit of black varying my pressure. Uh, so what am I trying to achieve with this? Well, a couple of things. First, I'm trying to modify the overall color because I want it to appear a little more dull and also a little bit darker. So that's one thing. The other thing that I'm trying to accomplish is I'm trying to add a little more texture to make that green area a little more interesting, like maybe there are a bunch of leaves there as seen from a distance. So creating rougher textures is a way of creating an illusion of detail so that you can make the viewer think like you've put in a lot of work into these details when in fact you just allow the pencil to create a texture for you and you ended up with something that looks very detailed. And of course the third and the final reason is to create some shadow areas in that canopy because if I leave it all uh, this, of the same value, in the same value, it's going to look kind of flat. So I'm trying to vary the amount of value as well as the color and texture 
so that it would look like some parts of those canopies, uh, some, some parts of that canopy are getting more light while others are in the shadow. And that's how we achieve a feeling of depth and volume in when we're drawing trees. So we have to have those darker shadow areas and we have to break up those green areas into smaller smaller clusters of leaves which are separated by these shadow areas. So as you can see this small tree in the background is already starting to take shape as well as volume and uh, it's starting to look good and it's also starting to look a lot more realistic in terms of color because the green is starting to look a little more natural. If you want to uh, reduce the amount of texture and do a little bit of blending you can always use that lighter color in, in this case it's, a, it's an olive green and go over those black areas and that will kind of muddy them up a bit and uh, make the texture a little bit more dull so you can control the amount of texture in various areas depending on what it is that you need generally speaking you want to have a little more texture in the foreground and a little less texture and a little bit blurrier shapes in the background and right now I'm starting to work on the grass the base color that I'm going to the base color that I'm going to use for this uh, grass here is going to be ochre and I want this ochre color because I want the grass to appear a little bit more yellowish and dry but I am going to be adding some green on top of it so I want to have some more of that olive green and I'm going to be modifying the overall color but first I'm going to start with that ochre and you can also see that I'm not just applying my pencil randomly I'm actually varying the length of my strokes so that I can make it look like the grass which is closer to us appears larger and taller and I'm using shorter strokes uh, for the grass in the background and that's another way of creating an illusion of distance and depth in your drawing uh, by varying the height of those blades of grass because the further you look the smaller uh, the, the smaller it's going to be getting and the shorter it's going to be uh, appearing to us and the closer it is to us the taller it will appear and now as you can see I'm uh, adding some olive green on top of that and you can see that I'm getting a nice uh, green yellowish uh, color with some ochre and brownish tones I, fe I felt also that I needed a little bit more yellow so that so I added some some of this yellow color but I'm going to be adding some brown as well because I want a little more depth in that grass. I also added a bit of yellow to the canopy of the tree as well. And now um, I need to think about what I'm going to do with the with the background. And I decided to make make some indications or make some suggestions of some distant mountains in the background and I'm going to use that darker blue again now one of the things that we're trying to achieve here is we're trying to imitate the atmospheric effect because that's what happens to the objects in the distance uh, they kind of fade in terms of the amount of value as well as the amount of contrast and texture so I just want to make some suggestions of those distant mountains and I'm going to make them kind of bluish but, I, but, they, but they still have to be dark enough and the line, the upper edge, still needs to be defined enough so that it stands against the rest of the sky. It, I still need to have a nice edge to value between the, the mountain and the sky. I'm also going to be adding some indications of maybe some bushes or uh, some trees or canopies in the distance it doesn't matter what they are maybe there are some distant trees that are barely visible behind this tall grass because of the the angle of viewing or maybe there are some bushes it doesn't really matter but I uh, use the same combination of colors for them 
as I did on the canopy of the tree, except for the fact, of course, that I uh, created a little bit less texture and a little bit less detail on them. And I also added a touch of blue to enhance that uh, atmospheric effect. Now, because there are some uh, very tall mountain peaks in Africa, maybe I'm going to add some snow on top of these uh, tallest uh, mountain peaks in the distance. So I'm going to create some lighter areas there by using a pencil eraser. Now, I know what you're thinking, colored pencils are kind of difficult to erase, but not really. I mean, if you didn't press too hard, you can actually remove quite a bit of that pigment. And you can actually create some lighter areas and you can create some contrast. So you can see that this looks like a tall uh, mountain far, far in the distance beyond this beyond this plain, beyond this savanna, and uh, and I think it's adding to the feeling of depth. But now I have to move on to the tree in the foreground, and this tree is going to be quite a bit larger and taller, and also a lot more detailed, so this one is going to take a bit more work. It's going to take at least uh, 45 minutes of work to get it to look very nice and detailed. I'm going to be applying some of the things that I normally use when I draw trees and I already have a tutorial on how to draw trees in colored pencil. That's one of my most popular videos. It's been viewed by tens of thousands of people probably. I don't know why, why it is that people like it so much but they obviously found some value in it. So now I'm going to be applying some of those things here. First I'm going to draw some branches that look kind of like twisted uh, gnarly branches of those African trees. And of course one of the things to remember when drawing branches is that in addition to the shape which has to kind of look twisted and irregular and maybe a little bit unpredictable because these tree branches grow every which way they also have to taper and if they don't taper they won't look very realistic or convincing at all so smaller thinner branches grow out of the thicker ones and these grow out of the tree trunk and as long as you keep those things in mind you will be able to create something that looks like realistic looking tree tree branches and boughs I'm not going to be overdoing it with these smaller branches and twigs all I have to do is make some indications of these smaller twigs and uh, a few suggestions uh, here and there will certainly go a long, long way so I don't have to overdo it. All I have to do is draw enough to entertain the eye of the viewer and make them, look, make them uh, feel like they're looking at something very very detailed and realistic and that's one of the things I like to do. I like to create a lo an illusion of detail and realism with as little effort as possible. And I'm going to be doing that with this tree. Uh, so I've pretty much uh, drawn the structure of these tree branches and the overall shape of the tree and now I'm going to start working on the canopy using that olive green like I did on the on that other tree in the in the background. So once again same approach. I'm using a small scribbling motion kind of trying to imitate the shape of those clusters of leaves. And another thing that's interesting about these trees is that um, the end of those branches has a uh, whole bunch of these smaller twigs that are so uh, small and pointy that they almost look like thorns. So I'm gonna, gonna kind of try to imitate that shape. I can't really get it to look 100% accurate but I'm going to try to draw something that kind of looks like it. 
this is a smaller drawing even though I zoomed in and it looks larger you can see in comparison in, in comparison to my hand that this is not a very large drawing and I've talked about this before in some of my previous videos I, I think that colored pencils because of the nature of the medium uh, they are just uh, suitable for drawing these miniatures these smaller size drawings which are detailed because colored pencils they don't have great coverage they are not very good at blending and covering large areas but they are very good at drawing details and that's why they lend themselves well to drawing these miniatures you can create some very nice interesting looking drawings on smaller sized paper for the people who like that sort of stuff if you want to be able to cover larger areas and draw larger pieces I really think that pastel pencils are far more suitable but a combination of these two also works a bit well and I like to combine colored pencils with pastel pencils so if I were using a combination of these two here I would probably do the sky with a, with a blue pastel soft pastel with a combination of a blue and white soft pastel and that would be done in a matter of minutes it would be done very very quickly and the same goes for these trees and canopies as well uh, I skipped over a part of the footage here I did a little bit more work on those uh, on those clusters of leaves and as you can see I'm using a black colored pencil to add some of these smaller twigs in between these clusters just adding a few here and there like I said I don't need to draw every single one I don't need to make it quite as detailed as a, as a real tree but just a few lines and a few suggestions of those smaller twigs here and there will help me create an, an illusion of a very very complex and detailed canopy of a tree and another thing that's important for me to do is to make sure that I go over those light brown areas with some darker colors whether it is a darker brown or a black because these are shadow areas they are under the canopy and the canopy is casting a shadow onto them and that's why these need to be they need to be uh, darker so I'm just uh, drawing a few more branches here and there and another thing that you can see I'm trying to make it look like some of these branches are in front of the others so if you want to make it look like one branch is in front of the other uh, you just uh, shade it so that it looks interrupted at one at one point and um, drawing those branches in front of the others is uh, is another important way of achieving a feeling of depth in your drawing because we want to make that tree look look, uh, look like a 3d object not a two-dimensional object here I'm also also using a bit of a uh, pencil uh, pencil eraser to lift up a little bit of those uh, dark green areas and create some highlights inside that canopy so that it can, so that I can make it look like some parts of that canopy are getting more light and are facing towards the light source and here again I am going over the tree trunk and some of the branches adding a little more texture trying to imitate the shape and the texture of the tree bark and trying to make the tree trunk look a little more twisted and rough uh, to make it a bit more realistic and also adding a bit more shadow uh, um, it's always important to be aware of your light source and in my case the light source is coming uh, more from the left side so the right side is going to be a little bit darker overall and another thing that I also decided to do I decided to go back with that light blue 
colored pencil and just go over these areas in between the branches now that the now that the tree is done I just want to make sure that I don't have any of the white patches or lighter areas in between I don't want to make it look like a, some sort of a glowing effect around the tree I want to have a nice clean edge between the tree and the plain blue background so I just went back and I went over the background just a little bit more just to make sure that these edges are clean and that I have a nice contrast between that tree in the foreground and my blue blue background. Now I'm going to proceed with the grass here and I'm going to do the giraffe last but I'm doing the grass in the same manner that I started the area on the left. I'm starting with this ochre a little bit and then I'm going to be adding some green and yellowish tones to it a little bit later. Um, a few words about the pencils I'm using. I've already talked a bit about these Stadler colored pencils. Um, I tend to use some other brands in addition to them when I feel like I need, uh, need a color that I don't have. For example, I've spent all of the browns, or all of the darker browns, uh, among these Stadler pencils, so I had to use a bit of this Faber-Castell darker brown. I think it's a, a walnut brown and here I used it uh, for the grass to add some darker areas in that grass to give it a little more depth and I also used it a little bit on those trees and I'm going to be using that dark brown on the giraffe as well so I don't really stick to just one brand of colored pencils I use whatever I have but I mostly have these Stadler colored pencils and some Faber-Castells and some other brands but I don't really think that the brands are that important obviously I, uh, there are some that are higher quality than the others but I just think that it doesn't really matter for my technique I'm uh, and this type of drawing is not too complex I drew some more of these uh, mountains in the background, some distant peaks in the background, and I also went over them a little bit with a white colored pencil uh, to make that area a little bit smoother and to remove some of the texture. So a white colored pencil is one uh, another way of blending colored pencils. It ten tends to make everything just a little bit lighter and a little bit duller but it also burnishes the surface of the paper quite a bit so I don't like to overuse it. I used it a bit on these mountains and I was quite happy with the way it turned out. I didn't want to use it on the sky. I'm happy with the way uh, the sky looks and how I achieved a smooth looking blue background by just using those q-tips and, uh, and carefully blending. I'm also adding a few darker details, a few darker touches to these mountains in the background to make their shape a bit more interesting and to enhance the contrast between the those lighter snow-covered peaks and maybe some uh, darker rocky areas there but no need to add too much detail on them because after all these are objects far in the distance so I don't really need to do too much I'm just going to go over them a little bit more with this white colored pencil to soften everything a little bit more and to make it a bit a bit blurrier so that it feels like it's really in the distance. My scene is coming along nicely. I think I've achieved some nice colors. I added a touch of yellow to the to the grass here on the right as well and I did a little bit more blending and I added a bit more olive green as well and then I also used the brown to add some darker areas in that grassy in that large grassy area and also to indicate some shadows under the tree and under the giraffe and I made sure that I that the shadow is going more from left to right because my light source is more more on the left side like I said here I'm also going to add a few more of these distant trees and bushes in the background 
just to have something in front of those mountains on the horizon and uh, again I'm trying to create a little more depth in my drawing and I'm adding some of these darker areas on that grass to break up that uh, grass area to, to make it look less monotonous and to make everything a little more interesting so I left this area where the giraffe will be mostly white and I'm going to clean up the edges a bit later but right now I'm starting to work on the details and I'm using a black colored pencil this is a primo black colored pencil and the reason why I'm not using a Stadler black colored pencil is because I felt that those were a little bit too light for my taste so I had a few very very dark details here so I wanted to use a darker black colored pencil so you see some black uh, some colored pencils are just a little more rich in terms of pigment than others and they give you uh, they they just give you darker marks than others these Stadler colored pencils pencils are a little bit lighter but they're also easier to blend and erase so they do have their advantages and disadvantages um, I need to work on the giraffe now. For my base color, I'm mostly going to use this ochre, but I'm going to apply it lightly in some areas and I'm going to use a bit more pressure in other areas. Now giraffes, they vary in terms of uh, in terms of their colors, both the, the base color of the fur as well as the color of those darker patches or spots. So there is almost some sort of a reticulated uh, pattern uh, which I'm going to try to imitate here but before I do I need to draw the base color first and I'm going to use this ochre as my lighter color and I'm going to be drawing some darker brown patches on top of that so I'm kind of hoping that this combination will look good and I've already used this ochre for the grass and in some other places so I think it'll fit well first I'm going to color most of the giraffe's body And once I do that, I'm going to have to make some indications of shadow areas. I did a bit of blending with a tutelian. And once again, these Sadler pencils are a little bit easier to blend than some other brands. And now I'm using uh, Faber-Castell Walnut Brown to draw some darker areas. I started by drawing some darker details on the head, adding some of these spots or darker patches around the eyes there are also some lighter areas almost white areas of fur but right now I'm adding some of these darker areas on the on the head and around the ears and now I'm going to be going down the neck and adding adding some more of these darker patches trying to uh, kind of make them form some sort of a pattern that looks like a realistic giraffe's fur. But you see, before I add any more of these spots, I have to shade the rest of the giraffe's body. And by shade, I mean indicate where the darker areas are. So you can't get caught up in drawing the details, in drawing these spots because if you do that your your subject your giraffe will still end up looking flat and to avoid that I have to indicate shadow areas and that way I can give that whole body a little more volume and shape and you can see here that I made some indications of darker areas uh, for example under the belly here uh, in, on this transition between the neck and the shoulder area so basically all of those areas which are facing away from the light source, the light source is mostly coming from above but also more from the left than right, 
and I'm basically sh trying to shade all of the areas which are facing away from the light source. I'm trying to make them a little bit more darker, which is why I'm adding a bit more of this brown on those uh, on top of that ochre and making and making those uh, shadow areas. So, so the behind here, the rear, is also facing away from the light source and I'm going to shade all of that and make that darker. The part of the belly which is uh, closer to the hind legs is also uh, a little bit darker and the part of the belly which is sticking outwards which is round is uh, lighter, it's supposed to be lighter. So here I did a little bit more work around the legs because I'm trying to define the legs as well. I deliberately left some some parts of that background unfinished because I wanted to work on the giraffe first. I added a little more yellow color to the overall um, color of the giraffe. I felt like it needed a touch of yellow and now I'm just going to start working with this Faber-Castell darker brown. This brown is darker than the Stadler ones that I have and it's just doing a good job at drawing these uh, darker patches. You can see how I'm trying to form a nice pattern and that the neck and the head is already starting to look very realistic and you can also see why it was so important for me to shade the entire body first by separating li the light side and the shadow side uh, or the light areas from the shadow areas because now you can see that the neck appears to have some kind of a volume because the the right side is darker and the left side is lighter so we can see how our main subject is kind of interacting with the light source and we couldn't achieve that if uh, if I didn't do the shading first. I also need to modify the shape of, of those uh, patches depending on the angle of viewing. So those which are on the belly, which are kind of facing away from the viewer, they need to be a little bit thinner and the ones on the rear uh, which are facing towards us they need to be wider and I'm just using a black color pencil here and there just to reinforce some of the shadow areas as well as further define some edges and some other shapes and I can also use an eraser here and there to clean up in between these spots but I like the way the giraffe looks. I can go over some of these shadow areas once again to make uh, some parts of the fur a little bit darker but so far so good. I like the way it looks. I'm going to be adding some a touch of that blue to some of the shadow areas and finally I added a touch of orange to the giraffe's fur to add a few warmer tones to it and make it a bit more interesting here and there. But both the giraffe and the background are largely done and it's time to wrap this scene up as, uh, as soon as I clean up some of these edges and fix the shape of the head and maybe a few more details on this tree trunk you can see that I removed the tape from the corners and um, I'm pretty much putting down the finishing touches I hope you like this nice little scene of African wildlife. I'm just putting down some finishing touches, working on the background and some of the edges here and there. Um, not a very large drawing, but I think it's very detailed and interesting. I plan to do a, a few more of these. I think that African animals are a great subject. and. I plan to do a few more drawings with colored pencils. I'm going to put a small signature in the lower left corner and now the scene and the drawing is finished. I hope you like it. Don't forget to check out my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.